one of them, Collage of Life Quilt. Uh, let's is, take a look at that one now. Yeah, it's the last piece I did uh, for my thesis work. And in it, I sort of took the concept of quilting because it's thought of as more of a woman's kind of pra art practice or right. craft practice. And then I added to that um, elements that were repeated in each piece. Uh, there's handmade paper in it from other projects that I've collaged into it. There's uh, one self-photograph, and they're all photographs that I've taken of myself that I made myself put in there. And then there are bits and pieces from journals I've written. So I was really reaching the core of, because words often are where the core of things happen for me, but it's painting that creates those words, interestingly enough. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting that um, we usually think of words as pointing to something outside of themselves, but you bring them back into the painting as sort of a representation of a state of mind or something that's going on in, in your subjectivity. So it's not just what the words point to, but, the, but actually the words are an example of something that you've produced. Yes, and for me, words have always created vision. So I see them linked to painting. I, I'll have students come into my class and, and I'll ask for a creative project. And they'll say, oh, but I'm a writer. I'm, well, I can't think of anything more creative. Right. You know, I can take a blank canvas and put some paint on it and make it be something, but to take words and make them be something, to take words and have them touch the emotions of people, that is incredible, incredibly creative. And so the moment that these things joined in my work, it brought on a whole new element and made me also realize when I first showed this piece, and it's, it's made a few trips out to, uh, to be shown. In fact, it's been around the world a couple times, more than I have. Um, <laughs> it's nice to be able to send yeah. representatives. <laughs> I just send my work out. <laughs> but I was getting letters from people around the world who were saying, you put into words something I felt. And it was such a strong message to me to have an audience respond that way that it made me look at what I was doing as an artist much more closely. I'm not sure if people can see over the TV screen because we can only get a limited resolution, but a lot of these uh, separate panels have little pictures of you or some part mm -hmm. of you in the, in the center and then there's text which um, is, is explicated in the brochure that goes along with it. And so it's sort of pictures of you and writings by you and, and then all these things stitched together that are also sort of chronological records of things that you've done. So it's a historical piece as well as a, a portrait and, and also kind of a, um, as you were, you were saying, talking about fragmentation and building yes. something out of fragments. So it's also a statement about identity in its own ways. Very it? much so. And in fact, this um, when I did this, I, I also realized the first time I showed it that I had to provide a book to go with it because it's uh, 84 inches high when it's installed in this, this mode. And people were standing on chairs to read it. I never thought, I thought of it as pattern. Oh, they want to read it too. So I did a handmade book that goes with it. And then I had people asking me if they could get a copy of the book. So I finally um, blurbed it. So blurb.com has the, the book, Collage of Life, the Quilt, on it. Yeah, if people have a chance to go and look at it in more detail, it's really interesting the way the panels relate to each other. Um, and uh, I think the, the kind of ensemble the way it works as an ensemble piece is uh, really fascinating and the kind of portrait that you're painting of yourself and your life. And very brave, too, to put so much <laughs> stuff about yourself, although I guess artists do that. But it reminded me, in a way, of a religious work in that there's so much symbolism and you really have to kind of look at it. You can interpret it. You can create a map yes. for it, in a way, which not all artwork necessarily requires. But here it's kind of helpful to have that kind Iconic of imagery is definitely has a place in my work. I create my own icons. Um, and then this is the encaustic piece that I uh, was talking about, Clash, or uh, Diasporic Spirit. And for those who don't know encaustic, it is, as you said, uh, wax with a pigment in it. Um, I use encaustic medium, which is um, wax, a refined wax with uh, um, Damar varnish. And I use both oil paint for this and um, wax or encaustic that has had color added to it. 
uh, in the case of this, there's a little of both. It would be hard for me to tell you where one is and one isn't because at the end it's, it's all covered in wax. But I wanted to find a way when I got into encaustic of really having my painting show up too. The painting that, that I'm familiar with, that other people are familiar with. So the horse is actually painted onto raw canvas. Oh, really? Okay. Which has been laid onto the encaustic during the process of building this piece. And then I allow the encaustic, the color of the encaustic, to bleed through the canvas and then cover it all with the medium. And there are other things in there that I've put in and lifted and created texture. I, I love texture, both literal and visual. Yeah, you can feel that. So, you know, so I had to work that in. But this is um, a way that I've been working with encaustic where I'm also getting the painting that I'm used to and I need to do in there. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at some uh, more things that maybe bring up. Oh, now this one is, of course, lovely for all the traditional reasons. Well, it's uh, it's my icon. It's my lotus blossom, if you're familiar with the symbols of Chinese um, painting. And when I first learned about the lotus blossom and what it represented in Chinese painting, I was a little kid in Washington, D.C. and didn't have too many lotus blossoms in the Around, backyard. Right, yeah. yes. so, but what I did have, what my father had planted, were some beautiful rose bushes. So I made the, the rose my lotus blossom. And, and because they kind of had that same hoary stem and they went away and the bushes got almost ugly and then they came back with this great beauty. And for me, it's hope and continuity. So whenever you see that in my work, it's a language, but it's also this particular piece. It's something like 43 by 43 inches, um, and I shipped it to Denmark, so it was not easy to do. <laughs> but I st I was blocked at the time; wasn't sure where I wanted to go with my work. Uh, pulled off a square of watercolor paper off of a roll, started in the center, painted out, and by the time I'm done with that, I have tons of ideas. So that's what unblocks me whenever I'm painting. So it's a symbol of creativity. In a way it, too, it does, and that's where the hope, for me, that's the hope, of course. Well, that's nice, because so often people do that kind of work, and the rose is, you know, a symbol of love, and it's, yeah. you know, a sort of very standard uh, metaphor, and this is a little bit different take on things. I loved also that it had those little drops of moisture at the top. All right, now this one is clearly autobiographical because it has your <laughs> picture in it. So tell us about Well, um, the wolf is my totem, but it's a female wolf. So this is La Loba. Uh, the crow is a symbol I use for my father, who, um, who I sort of credit with encouraging me, always thinking I could do what I needed to do. So it's, it's also kind of an emotional piece when I see it from that perspective. I seldom see myself in it, but yeah, I know I'm there. Um, <laughs> but it's really about those, those things that have guided me in my life. And I have a couple of Pasafino horses, and uh, whenever we get to our property together, that property will ca be called Rancho de la Loba. So it's uh, very symbolic for me personally. All right, let's take a look at another one. Uh, so here we have the horses coming yes. in again. Yes, and we have the, the horse on the left is my horse, Mariah. And at the time I painted that, I knew that she needed a buddy before we moved to our property together, that it was I didn't want to just have one horse. And Pasafinos especially are, are very, uh, very herd oriented. And she had been, she'd been a broodmare, and she had been used to being around a lot of horses. So I talked to my friends who have her and who are breeders of Pasafinos, and I said, well, you know, I'm kind of interested in this horse or this horse, but let's let Mariah pick out the horse. Well, the one in the back represents a horse I like that I didn't think they'd ever sell to me, and her name's Oheata. And uh, Mariah being um, sort of a lead mare, just definitely the alpha mare, she picked Oheata as her buddy right about the time I was trying to decide who the second horse would be. So Mariah and Oheata are my horses. Well, that's a lovely story. So you really do have a kind of a, a narrative of your life in all these different 